Llama Index is a great large language model framework to help you build applications by providing tools that facilitate document indexing, retrieval, and more. There are some functionalities that I find incredibly useful. It allows you to ingest from different data sources and data formats, enable document operations such as inserting, deleting, updating, and refreshing the document index, supporting synthesis over multiple documents, use the router to pick between different query engines, allow for various document embeddings, including the hypothetical document embeddings to enhance output quality, support the brand new OpenAI function calling API, offer a wide range of integrations with various vector stores, ChatGPT plugins, tracing tools, LangChain, and more. Okay, so let's explore some of those functionalities in this video. I'm going to go through this notebook together with you. I will link the notebook in the description below. So if you like to follow along, please feel free to open up the notebook and run it yourself. First step, it is important to be able to load external document in order to interact with your large language models. Llama Index provided data connectors or Llama Hub for us to do this easily. Here's an example where we imported a Wikipedia reader from Llama Hub. And then we are able to specify the Wikipedia pages we would like to read. And then we can save those pages into this documents object. Just to show you what Llama Hub looks like, there are more than a hundred different data loaders. And if you click on each one of them, it will show you exactly how to load. It will provide you consistent syntax to load whichever data you would like to load. So we have for example, Discord, if you want to load Discord data, we have Google Docs, GitHub Repo, all different kinds of data sources. And one thing I would like to point out is that it also supports multi-model documents. For example, you can use this image reader to load in text from image. Uh, if it has plain text, it uses this model. And if it has the key value pair text, like an invoice, it will use a donut transformer to extract the text from the invoice image. I thought this is pretty cool. Yeah. So that's the data hub to load data consistently. Before we jump into some of the cool use cases, I want to quickly go through the basic query functionalities. In order to ask a question about your document, you basically only need these three lines of code. You need to build an index over the documents objects. The documents objects is the Wikipedia pages that we just defined. And then you can query an index with the default query engine, the retriever query engine. And then we can ask the question about the document and it will provide a response. So this is the high level API. You can also use the low level API to help you configure how you would like to retrieve the information and how you would like to synthesize the response. There are different options for retrievers and also different options for response synthesis that you can explore. So I'm not going to go through each of them in this video because I want to show you some of the cool use cases with Llama Index. One of my favorite Llama Index feature is the document management, which allows for inserting, deleting, update, and refresh operations. So once we have created an index for the document, you might need to periodically update your index to allow for new data coming in. And sometimes this process can be costly if you are using an OpenAI embedding options. This will cost you money for document embeddings. Since you have already spent the money for your previous document, you probably don't want to spend that money again. Llama Index allow you to update and refresh your document index without the need to redo the whole process all over again. In this notebook, there is a complete example of this kind of use case where we have two Discord data set dumping from two timestamp. When the new information coming in, rather than rebuilding the entire index from scratch, we can index only the new documents using this refresh function. As you can see, it's just three lines of code. You can refresh your index. No need to rebuild the index for the previous document. With Llama Index, it's super easy to query multiple documents. Here is an example where we have three PDFs of Uber financial data from March 2022, June 2022, and September 2022. It's the quarter ending in that month. We first need to load the documents, and then we create index for the documents 
we build query engines for the documents. We have seen this before. What you have not seen is this query engine tool method, which allows us to define the metadata for each query engine. So here we can give it a name, September 2022, and provide a description for this query engine. For example, this one is provides information about Uber quarterly financials ending sub, uh, September 2022. This is important because this basically tells our language model what this query engine is. And based on the description of each query engine, our language model is able to use the correct document for the questions. And here we're using a special query engine called the subquestion query engine, which allows us to query multiple documents. This query engine will generate a query plan containing subquestions against subdocuments before synthesizing the final answer. So if we ask the question, analyze Uber revenue growth over the latest two quarter filings, it will generate two subquestions for us. The first question is, what is the revenue growth of Uber for the quarter ending in September 2022? And the second question is, was the revenue growth of Uber for the quarter ending June 2022? The language model will answer those two questions separately, and the final answer is based on the answers for those two questions. Another super cool query engine is the router query engine. You can define a custom router query engine that can route to different databases. In this example, we have a SQL database and a vector database. Based on your question, the router query engine can route different questions to different databases. In this example, we first created a SQL database using SQL Alchemy, and then we added three rows of data here with the population information for three cities, Toronto, Tokyo, and Berlin. And for the vector database, we used Wikipedia pages for the three cities again. As well, we have seen before, we're always starting by building index. So we built the SQL index based on the SQL database, and we built a list of three vector indices from the three Wikipedia pages. And then in the query engine tool, we can give the description for the SQL uh, query engine. It's useful for translating a natural language query into a SQL query over a table containing city stats containing the population country of each city. Uh, and then for each of the vector database query engines, we have the description. It is useful for answering semantic questions about that specific city. And then we can define our router query engine, including all of those tools into the query engine tools parameter. Okay, now if we ask the question, what city has the highest population? our router query engine was able to route this question into the SQL database, generate this SQL syntax, and execute this SQL syntax, and then get the response that Tokyo has the highest population with almost 14 million people. Now, if we ask another question, tell me about the historical museums in Berlin, our router query engine now is directing this question to the vector database to search for the Wikipedia pages and get the response here. Yeah, now you can see this is the response returned. When we ask questions about external document, what we normally do is that we create text embeddings for both our questions and our documents, and we find the most relevant chunks in our document that's relevant to the question and we use that relevant text chunk to answer the question. However, the answer to the question might not be as similar to the question as you might think. What if we could generate a hypothetical answer to the question first, and we use this hypothetical answer vector to find the most relevant text chunks most similar to this hypothetical answer vector. So that's what this hypothetical document embeddings is about. So in this example, we used the HYDE query transform to generate a hypothetical document and use it for embedding lookup. And then we used the transform query engine to, to convert the original query to the hypothetical answer query. From this example that I got from the document, it was able to improve the output quality significantly. And this might not work every time. Uh, you might want to use it with caution to see if it actually works for your use case.
So there are different types of transform query engines that you can check on this page. Again, query transformations are modules that will convert a query to another query. They can be a single step. It can also be a multi-step process. And there were several use cases in this document that I thought is, is pretty cool to look at. And this hypothetical document embeddings is just one of them. There are some other use cases. I encourage you to take a look. So in this final section, I would like to talk about how to use Llama Index with LangChain. Please check out my previous 10 minute tutorial on LangChain. I have made several other videos on LangChain as well. I like LangChain a lot. If you're familiar with LangChain, you might be wondering, so what are the differences between Llama Index and LangChain? And why should I be using Llama Index or why should I be using LangChain? Great question. In my opinion, the LangChain has a much broader use case. It's focusing on chains and agents and integrates with everything. Llama Index has a different focus. It has a much more narrow focus uh, going deep into the indexing, retrieval, query engine functionalities. But Llama Index and LangChain are not mutually exclusive. Actually, I have seen a lot of applications using both. <laughs> they use both Llama Index with LangChain. So I would like to show you two use cases on how you can combine them together. In this first example, we can use Llama Index as a callable tool. Here's a simple example. We load a document, we created an index based on the document. Instead of using Llama Index to query this document, we want to use LangChain. And we can use the LangChain agent to method to wrap the Llama Index into a LangChain tool. And then when we initialize the LangChain agent, we can pass in the tools we just defined, which is the Llama Index as the tool. The second example is to use Llama Index as a memory module. LangChain has multiple ways to deal with memory. Also, Llama Index is the same. So here we use GPT index chat memory to keep the chat memory using Llama index. Again, when we initialize the agent, we define the memory as this memory we got from Llama index. So when you ask the question, um, hi, I'm Bob, what's my name? The language model was able to see the chat history and figure out your name is Bob. So yeah, so you can totally combine different functionalities of Llama index with LangChain if you like. That's it for this video. Let me know if you use Llama Index or LangChain and which tool do you prefer if you ever use them together or use them separately. I would love to hear from you. Hope you find this video helpful. See you next time. Bye.